Hi submarine friends. Oh man, I've been busy today. I've been working my butt off. Anyways, here's what I've got accomplished. So when I turn the batteries off, this panel is dead, of course. So I turn the batteries on, 12.4 volts on the first battery bank, 12.3 on the second battery bank, put it on all and I got 12.4. So anyways, uh, so this switch here on the end, both ends are the thruster motors. So that's like uh, driving a skid steer. You know, you want the two outside ones to operate the thrusters. So then that is the water pump for cooling the um, exhaust system. Uh, it doesn't cool the engine. It only cools the exhaust system. The engine actually has a keel cooler. So then that, that is my air conditioning fan. Boy, it works good. I can feel it up here even. That really works well. This one here is the compressor. Uh, this one I'm not going to turn on because it's the variable ballast tank pump. And that's another thing I just spent the last hour hooking up because I turned the pump on and it was dry and I don't like that. So what I did is I finished the plumbing to the variable ballast bag so that there's some water in the system. So what I'll do is I'll just hook a garden hose to it. That's how I have it rigged up because I had to empty it. So I just pumped it all out, but there's still some water in it. So if I want to test anything, I can just run the garden hose over to my shop sink and I can just try the pump out. Otherwise it will run dry. I don't like that. So again, that's the thruster. So that takes care of those. And then I've got two, two 100 amp uh, breakers right here. And so what that does, so if, first of all, everything inside this box is fused. So each function has a 15 amp fuse. So that's all protected. This guy right here is a negative, is for the negative circuit. So um, I'm fusing both sides, negative and positive. And I'm not doing that because I think I need to. I'm doing it because I'm cheating. I need a negative junction box. So I need like a negative isolated pole to join all the negatives to. So I thought, well, why not just put a breaker in there? And then I got double the protection. So, and then this is the same thing. So all the functions that don't go through this, go through this guy. So it's still going to be fused but this is the main breaker ahead of the fuses. Just like a, a panel in a house, it has a main 200 amp breaker and then all your 15 and 20s and everything else. So what I'm gonna do now that I'm back on track after working on that variable ballast tank, I'm going to put some switches up here and they will control the, um, uh, the forward light, uh, not the, um, not the positioning thruster or rather like the bow thruster because what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a handheld um, control box like this, but smaller that also operates the rear thrusters plus that thruster. So I can be sitting here and I don't have to have this thing here stretched all the way to the front. Although I think it might, I haven't actually tried that. It's pretty close. But it would be kind of awkward because it's not quite long enough because you know you're sitting with your face right in the window so it's nice to just have like a, a controller so this will control the thrusters plus that one like i just said so then i'm going to put my interior lights in i haven't decided if i want to turn on interior lights individually or all at once I don't see any advantage to isolating one light from another. I think I'll just wire them all together. And then if, uh, if I have to change that, I can change it. This way it's, it's just simpler. Remember, I like army Jeeps, so I want it simple. So I got a whole bunch of magnets from Amazon. They showed up yesterday. So I'm just gonna use magnets to mount those lights. So the lights have a little tiny hole 
and I can just screw right through the magnets. I got the type of magnets with a hole through the center and then I can just dunk, stick it right to the ceiling. Although I've got this ring here which might interfere, but we'll see what happens. It should be all right. And also I got the magnets to hold the wire. So this, this wire right here, this is my really nice cabling that I bought for trailers. It's got seven wires inside it. So I want to run like this to here and back to this switchboard. I already drilled a hole through here so it can go in, but it needs to stick to the wall. I already got a magnet stuck on here to hold it. And that's just going to zip tie it to that. But now I've got magnets just for this. So that should work out nice. So really there's not much left to do in terms of wiring. I can't wire the rear thruster motors in until the ballast tank is, is uh, reconnected to the sub. And I also left the ground wires off on the solenoids for the, uh, the rear thrusters. That's why when I hit this, you don't hear the solenoids clunking. I guess I could put a ground on it just so that I know it's working, but there's no reason it shouldn't be working. So that's it. That's a pretty simple electrical system, hey? That's the way I like it. Simple. Oh, and I got to run a power over for the scrubber. I might just put a switch up here for the scrubber. I'll have to think about that. I mean, I got enough wires in here. Actually, I have um, spare wires in here that are doing nothing also that I could just tag over to there. I'm going to think about that. Remember, I want to keep it simple. I say that a lot, don't I? Anyways, that's, uh, that's my progress right now. Shut that off. I'm pretty darn happy. This is really going good. So once I finish this wiring, I think I'm going to uh, jump back onto the diesel engine. I spent the whole weekend really thinking hard about switching engines. I know that's crazy, isn't it? But I've got this, I've got this little three-cylinder Kubota engine. It's uh, smaller than the Yanmar engine. Uh, it's got a built-in hydraulic pump, the whole bit. It's got, uh, I think, 1,500 hours on it. Beautiful little rig. It's actually in a little excavator that I'm going to retire. And so I thought I would take that engine and uh, put it in here. It's actually so small I could actually put it right inside the hull, but oh, I put so much work into that other thing. So I'm just going to carry on with that. Sometimes I, I tend to overthink things and change things that don't need to be changed. So the, the plan with the Yanmar engine is good, so I'm going to stick with it. But I spent all weekend on ChatGPT researching all the hydraulic flows and the weight of the engine and the power curves and everything else. And the engine is ideally sized, but um, there's really no point because the Yanmar engine I have is a really good engine. It's really low hours, actually less hours than the Kubota. It's just the Kubota is, is smaller physically. So anyways, that's it for today. Ciao.